Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> I've crafted this pumpkin beast to give you all a trick. No treats from me this year. <laughs> I'll show you how I made this monstrosity after the drop. <laughs> So, it occurred to me after the fact, I probably could have saved myself some time and effort by looking at a dollar store or a craft store for a foam pumpkin to start. <laughs> but, hey, if you can find one, great. And if you can't, here's how you would make one. I've got some two inch, two inch XPS foam. Boy, it's been a while. Come on, brain, figure this out. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna uh, cut them in roughly like a four inch square and glue them together. And this is gonna give me a block, about a four inch by four inch by maybe five or six tall. And I'm just going to be in carving and rounding out a pumpkin shape. And once I've got the rough shape I'm looking for, I'm going to uh, use a pencil and score down the sides, first in the four directions, and then ultimately in between each of those sections for a total of eight. And I'm gonna carve the ribs of the pumpkin out using my X-Acto. And it ends up looking something like that on screen there. I'm gonna take a piece of scrap and I'm gonna carve it into the stem. So starting with the a wide portion and then narrowing it down uh, for the top. Speed it up here. You can see how I'm uh, curving it in for the stem. Once I like the basic shape, I'm going to start trimming out uh, roots or um, yeah, just so I can uh, sink the stem in between the ribs of the pumpkin bit that I've carved. You'll see what I'm talking about here. I place the stem down on top of my would-be pumpkin. Uh, I like the look and the fit, so a little hot glue gun. Get it glued in nice and tight. And uh, I'm glad I did this because uh, I end up manipulating the, the project for painting and for crafting like putting on bits and pieces, I end up grabbing the stem a whole heck of a lot. I'm only now realizing this as I'm doing the video. I'm really glad I glued that on nice and tight because uh, it was very helpful to manipulate the piece to get all the details, the bits, and the painting done. So I guess just a heads up if, you've just, if you decide to make something like this uh, yourself with the stem in place. And you can see I kind of trimmed those bits down so they really look like they belong to the pumpkin, like it belongs where I've put it. Uh, I'm gonna go back in with a, uh, I believe that's a, a clay sculpting tool. I'm just gonna put some texture in and make it look as though it's a uh, off of a very large gnarled root because, well, let's face it, this is an absolutely massive pumpkin beast. Using a pencil, I'm gonna carve out where I want the mouth to be. And then I'm gonna use my X-Acto, cut out the edges, and then begin to remove all of that foam from there. I'm gonna end up using that uh, sculpting tool. It pokes in and tears chunks out real well. And after that, it looks really bad. So I'm gonna go back in with a thin piece of the XPS foam and just cut out like a, almost like a plate to cover up the mess. And just for the heck of it, I do a little tonsil in there. So if anybody's really looking, uh, they'll see a tonsil in the back of his big old mouth. Now it's time to absolutely line his mouth with rows and rows of teeth. Um, I was actually out of toothpicks, so I pulled out my dowels my tiny little dowels, essentially toothpicks without the tip, which is a shame because I really wanted the tip. 
<laughs> but uh, that's okay. I used my clippers and uh, you cut them at a nice diagonal and you get a nice jagged looking tooth. And then it's just uh, jamming the teeth in. And at first I poked them in and glued them and that was absolutely not working. But I found, and it I've, uh, actually works really well for the design. I just poke in uh, a row of them and then go over it with the hot glue gun and make like a gum. So I glue them down and really fix them to the foam, but then I also create this really cool texture that I'm gonna utilize when I uh, go to paint it. It's gonna be flesh instead of the pumpkin flesh. Um, uh, I can't wait, it's gonna look great. And this was the first row done. Now it's time to cut a whole bunch more and do a whole bunch more rows. And I ended up uh, realizing that it was a whole lot easier and it stopped ripping the foam apart if I pre-poked the holes. So pre-poke your holes. <laughs> it works a whole lot better. And just like the first row, I go back in with the hot glue gun and uh, just keep going, keep going. I think I stop at the third row, but I do um, an occasional fourth row tooth here or there to help fill it out. For this creature, I really wanted like a big monstrous tongue. I envisioned drool dripping all the way down it, coming out of this uh, creepy grinning mouth with these ridiculous rows of teeth. So I would not be dissuaded this time. I am going to add a tongue. Uh, grab a piece of the off cut from uh, originally doing the shape and I give it a rough carve into a tongue shape. Um, yeah, I don't know, not much to say about it really. <laughs> it's a tongue shape. Um, the foam bends real easy. So I was able to give it this nice curve and uh, because I wanted to glue it down on the bottom because of that tonsil, right? And then, uh, once the mouth was taken care of, it was time to clean the pumpkin up a little bit. I'd cut too deep, so in my ze overzealousness to give this foam ball its pumpkin shape, I cut much too deep. And so once again, I turned to my modeling foam and uh, I just smear it in and help take care of those deep cracks. And this is ultimately going to make it look way, way more realistic as a pumpkin. And I knew I wanted it up on spider legs, so I bought some armature wire. I uh, haven't played with this in a while, so I'm super excited. And then I folded out the packaging, and uh, for some reason I just got real nostalgic to see my wife. <laughs> So after hanging out with Mrs. Terrain for a little while, I went back to the craft table and started bending out uh, the shape of some legs. Uh, and it, it took me all, all, a long while to get the shape just right. Uh, this is after a couple of attempts, and even these attempts are a little wrong. If I had went with the very first go, the legs would be absolutely massive. So it did take some uh, experimenting to make it work. Once I got a size and shape that I liked, I used the first one to cut out all four of them. And then I got the idea of doing like little praying mantis claw arms for the front. And so that's what I did, cut those out, bended those into shape, got the placement that I liked, and then hit everything up with hot glue to keep it in place. Uh, now, possibly the most time intensive part of the project was in fact wrapping these legs in the twine. And this is to create that pumpkin vine look. The look as though the vines have come together and are working as arms and musculature and, and skeleton-esque uh, shape and structure. Did that make any sense with that? I hope so. Uh, just glue the end in where the vine would be coming into the pumpkin and then slowly working your uh, the way down on the armature wire, just gluing the twine to it. And it's a combination of working fast 
and efficiently because the armature wire is metal it's going to diffuse the heat from the hot glue very quickly so you need to get your glue down get the twine in place fast really fast this was a pain in the butt and i think each leg has four or five strands and then I ended up gluing in bits and pieces to fill out and obfuscate the metal of the armature wire. This took a long, long time. It was the worst part of the project, but after I finished it, I was so happy because it looked absolutely amazing. As good as it looked though, the legs, the arms, they were looking a little light, like they needed something. And so I thought I'd do some interesting looking like pumpkin armor pumpkin plating so that it looked both organic and i don't know <laughs> pumpkin armor man i don't know <laughs> so i carve up some of the off cuts uh from when i was doing the actual shaping i give it that uh that rib to mimic pumpkin flesh. I do little bits for the hands and then I do long guards for the legs and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now it's time to do some eyes. I sketch out uh, the rough size and shape of the beast's head with the mouth uh, area indicated and I start to make little dots of hot glue on, on my parchment paper. These dots are going to dry and then peel off nice and easy. And then it's just a matter of adding a little more hot glue to the back and gluing them on to the pumpkin itself in, in place properly. I try to make it look symmetrical and even, but overall I'm not too worried about it because this thing is kind of like a horror, an abomination of sorts. So if it's a little askew, it only adds to that uh, unease you see uh, or the unease you feel when you see something like this. Then I go in with the uh, Black Magic base coat, which is half black paint, half, uh, half matte Mod Podge. I'm going to paint the green vines up with the Shamrock Green. Uh, that is the paint in which the Shamrock Boys got their name. And then I try a couple of different oranges. Uh, Jack O Lantern for uh, or from Americana, I think that was, and Apple Barrels Harvest Orange. Both of them are awful <laughs> and don't cover at all. And it takes me uh, multiple coats to get the awful coverage of orange that I manage. Then I'm gonna take Pink Parfait from Apple Barrel and do up the gums and the tongue and bits of patchy flesh near the boils that I had uh, done alongside the eyes on the parchment paper. To keep with the food theme, let's use vanilla from Craftsmart. We're gonna hit up all those uh, bony knobs on the uh, the pumpkin armor, and we're gonna get uh, all those teeth painted in vanilla as well. And the big trick was to make sure you got all of these little nubs and bony protrusions from all angles. It's easy to, particularly with these teeth here, it was easy to miss certain sides. So I'd have to keep going back in over and over. Then I'm gonna hit those little spider eyes up with a, a nice black. Time to hit it with some washes. I'm gonna use Army Painter's Red Tone for the gums and the tongue. Uh, a, bit, a bit expensive, to be honest, for uh, a homemade craft, what with the Army Painter paints, but uh, well worth it. It gives the gums a bloody uh, red fleshy look and I absolutely love it. Um, I lost footage of me putting on the black wash but here it is. I hit the vines and the pumpkin and pumpkin armor with my homemade black wash and I'm absolutely loving the look. I'm gonna use that uh, slime effect from Army Painter to finish off these boils and once the boils are painted there's one thing left to do and that is to gloss some bits up. I decide to use some of this light cure UV resin 
boy what a mistake it was. <laughs> it works very well in thin coverage areas like these eyes. I'm going to coat uh, the little spider eyes to make them nice and glossy and stand out. But I also go in and do the gums and the tongue as well. And in these areas where I use a lot of it, it took forever to cure and was sticky for the longest of times. I ended up having to use my daughter's uh, acrylic nail light dome. Uh, yeah, I've got a flashlight of my own, but it just didn't work. And so I used her nail dome and finally got the UV resin to cure. Or at least cure well enough to finish this video. <laughs> finally, uh, to make some drool for the tongue. You can see I have the really big piece that I've already made um, running down the middle of the bottom of the tongue. I'm going to show you how I did that using my uh, parchment paper and drawing on like a drool line with several different globs. Once it's dry and cooled down, you can pull it off of the parchment. I'm gonna lay it back down and go back over the flat side with some uh, more hot glue and just round it up a bit so that it's like three dimensional and looks, a, uh, looks less flat. And then once that's done, we're gonna glue it to the undersides of the outside of the bottom of the tongue and this is going to finish off our drool look and we are done here's some shots of the beast facing off against tinley and the shamrock boys who will win don't don't worry tinley and the shamrock boys have some plot armor on <laughs> Did you like the video? Did you like this craft? Please smash that like button. I'd absolutely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I'm so glad you're here. I couldn't do this without you. Happy Halloween. I hope you have an absolute blast. Don't eat too much candy. Or you'll end up like uh, my pumpkin man there with all those weird looking teeth. <laughs> As always, like each other, love each other, and craft on. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone.